So we now move to the Raman lidars and uh, uh, differential absorption lidars presented by Christine Nist of DWD. Christine? Yes, thanks, Nico. Okay, very um, good. So everybody can hear me and it seems the pointer works as yes. well. Thank you. Yes. Okay, um, first of all, I would like to thank Alexander Heffele from uh, Meteo Swiss who supported me with some contents for this presentation. Talking about Raman LiDAR and dial systems, they are similar to silometers. So active optical based systems that uses pulses of laser radiation to probe the atmosphere and to provide high vertical and temporal resolution information. And what kind of information um, similar to silometers, the scattering properties of atmospheric aerosols plus, and this is in addition, they are also able to measure air temperature and humidity profiles and both of these parameters are key parameters to fill um, the observational gap in the boundary layer. In contrast to silometers or ALCs, Raman LiDAR or dial systems are not that operated in a dense and extended network, but um, there is a lot of or a large bench of research instruments, but also some operational units that are measuring routinely at a number of um, national infrastructure sites. So coming to the additional um, parameters of air temperature and humidity profiles, they can be measured because of the measurement principle, starting with the Raman LiDAR system. The Raman LiDAR measures or detects in addition to the um, back lengths, also um, signals at different wavelengths. And these signals emerge from scattering of molecules such as O2, N2 and water vapor, which absorb um, part of the photon's energy or add an amount of energy to the photon's energy, so-called inelastic scattering. This is actually uh, the Raman process. So by inelastic scattering, the molecules change their vibrational and rotational state. So the backscatter coefficient shown in the LIDAR equation by Simona before must be um, replaced by the Raman backscatter coefficient that is proportional to the um, number of scattering molecules. And from this um, information, water vapor mixing ratio can be obtained using the um, ratio between the signal from water vapor and nitrogen, where here the constant C is a calibration constant that can be obtained from radio sound profiles. Additionally, to water vapor mixing ratio, as I said, it's possible to measure um, temperature profiles that can be derived from the pure rotational Raman method um, or spectrum using um, the ratio of spec scattered signals at two suitable um, spectral regions having different temperature dependency. So with the Raman um, principle, it's possible to measure temperature and humidity profiles, while um, the principle of the dial system is different and allows for observations of humidity profiles only. It uses elastic scattering at two different wavelengths really close together. One wavelength called the online wavelength is tuned to a water vapor absorption line. And the other one called the offline wavelength is um, close by, but tuned um, to a weekly or not absorbing um, water vapor absorption line. So the difference in the returns between um, between the two wavelengths is then due to absorption by water vapor molecules. So the measurement of the ratio um, of the backscatter, it's the two wavelengths as a function of range um, can be used to calculate the water vapor concentration profile. This is a classical dial approximation to retrieve the water vapor mixing ratio. So to summarize um, the products from dial and Raman LiDAR, as I said, Raman LiDAR and dial um, are able to measure specific humidity or water vapor mixing ratio with an uncertainty of about 10% or even less than 10% and the attenuated backscatter, while Raman LiDAR is also able to measure temperature 
profiles and provides additional char characteristic of aerosol, like aerosol backscatter coefficient and extinction coefficient. Um, the resolution in time and height in the boundary layer is really good. It's about a minimum one minute and in, uh, in vertical resolution about 10 meters. This is a bit lower in the free troposphere and both system measure during um, uh, have a large uh, range. They cover well the boundary layer that is needed particularly to fill the observational gap. Just to note here, this is just a summary of, of the products and their uncertainty. And this depends uh, not to a specific instrument, but uh, yeah, just from, from the um, latest publication um, seen below. Um, but important to mention here is that the quality so the uncertainty and the resolution in time and height is really, really useful for different applications and important ones such as um, shown um, for the routine and operational Raman LIDAR RIMO operated by Meteor Swiss at Payen. They uh, showed successful use for data assimilation and a, a positive NWP impact. The presentations um, are shown here. Uh, the publications are shown here. And this shows also a high potential for calibration and validation studies uh, for current and future water vapor temperature satellite missions. They also could show the usefulness of this data for climate science, um, particularly because of the long term and uh, continuous observation of water vapor, where they could show uh, some trend analysis and coming to some dial um, applications. There will be a publication soon related to uh, the diurnal cycle of water vapor in the Arctic. And these data are based on a dial system, which is a pre-production version from Weisler. Um, this uh, instrument, it's quite new. And it's also operated at DWD uh, or by DWD in Lindenberg. And um, because um, of the pre-production version, um, it's um, assessed in terms of its operational readiness level. So from the technical point of view, it's really easy to, to mount and also to there's much uh, there's less to maintain. It's fully automatic running and it shows really promising results in several senses, like it captures, um, for example, subgrid scale meteorological phenomena. It shows a really good comparison against radio sound data for water vapor mixing ratio. The bias is less than 0.3 gram per kilogram. And also compared to model output, it shows really promising results that the data can be used for next step, for example, for NWP impact studies. But the applications shown here are really few. And I have seen also, especially for the Raman LIDAR, some of the authors of these publications and applications are present. So probably if you have more detailed questions, they can give a better answer than I do. So just uh, coming to a summary of benefits and challenges from Raman LIDAR and DIAL. The technology of both systems is well understood and the maternity allows for operational use. Of course, there are always technical issues, particular laser maintenance or eye safety issues, particularly if you want to operate such systems in a network. Um, Raman LIDAR and DIAL provide continuous water vapor profiles that are important gap in the current observation systems, but not to forget the systems are weather sensitive, that limited data are avail available in and above optically thick clouds. The data resolution and quality meets um, the requirements of NWB, NWP and climate studies. And these systems are commercially available and the ones that are available are fit for network applications, but still as a challenge, there are, there are only few ones. The system complements perfectly um, microwave radiometer and radio sound information. And uh, yeah, the Raman LIDAR also provides continuous temperature 
and relative humidity profiles plus the characterization of aerosols. But Rama LIDAR in contrast to dial systems need to be calibrated. So using um, external sensors. So this is all from my side. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Christine. Um, there was uh, one comment that uh, it disappeared somehow, but um, about uh, that there is a Raman LiDAR network in the uh, UK, uh, nine operational LiDARs. I don't know, maybe you mentioned that and, and that's why it disappeared, I'm not sure. Um, and, um, and I have one question about the Raman LiDAR calibration. Can you say something about that? Just uh, something? Um, some more details or you fit, you use the radio sound um, to okay. fit. Okay, so yeah. you need the radio sound, okay. Yeah. Because I, I know that also you mentioned um, uh, complementary um, or kind of a synergy with the micro radiometers. And uh, I know that um, some radar, Raman LiDAR are also calibrated using the integrated water uh, path, uh, integrated water vapor from, uh, from the micro radiometer. Ah, okay. 